This video looks at sketches when you have right half plane factors or delays. So far then, in this series, we've looked at systems with real poles and zeros, which are relatively straightforward to handle. So what we want to do next is see what changes if we've got right half plane poles or zeros. And we're going to demonstrate this through a few worked examples because you'll notice it's very similar to the same discussion in the Bode videos. So you might want to go and look at those again if you're not clear. Now similarly, we're going to do a very brief bit looking at the impact of delays on Nyquist diagrams. Now just as a note, we're not going to discuss Nyquist diagrams of systems with significant underdamping. We did do that in the Bode series, but we're not going to do it here because it's not really straightforward to do sketches. And in that case, I would recommend you just get the computer out straight away. So just a reminder of the procedure we're looking at. In order to do sketches, we ask questions like what happens as omega goes to zero or infinity and roughly how to gain and phase change in between. We might look more carefully at what happens near the minus one point. And finally, we transcribe this information into the Argand diagram. So we're going to just go through a number of examples with right half plane factors. The first example, g equals 1 over s minus 4. Now, the first statement is relatively obvious. For small omega, the gain is minus a quarter. In fact, if you get rid of the minus, clearly it's just a quarter. And the phase is minus 180. You can see there's an s in the denominator, a single pole, no zeros. So clearly, the gain must reduce monotonically as frequency increases. So if I do my boat diagram for the gain, and I put in my corner frequency of 4, you're going to get a boat diagram that looks a little bit like this. And obviously, the low frequency gain, we said, was a quarter. What about the phase? Well, the phase is given by this statement here. The argument of g is minus 180 plus 10 to the minus 1 of omega over 4. So this is monotonically increasing from minus 180 to minus 90. So if I do my phase diagram and do my asymptotes, what you've actually got is a phase which is doing something like this, where this is minus 90 and this one down here is minus 180. Now if I put those two statements together, what do I get? Well, we saw the system started here at minus 0.25, minus a quarter, and that's at minus 180 degrees. And then you'll notice the phase goes up, which means that we're moving in an anti-clockwise direction. The gain is going down, so we're always getting closer to the origin. And we approach the origin in the minus 90 degree direction. So I hope it's fairly clear. You're going to end up with a plot something along these lines here. <coughs> Second example. So g equals 16 times 1 minus s over s plus 2, s plus 4. So again, we start with the easy bit. For small frequencies, you can see the gain is 2 and the phase is 0. We're going to start on the positive real axis. Now, as we increase omega, what you'll notice is this 1 minus s is probably going to dominate over the s plus 2, s plus 4, because the corner frequency is 1, comes be before the 2 or the 4. So probably you'll get a slight increase in gain before the gain goes down again. So if I do a gain plot here, put in the corner frequencies, 1, 2, and 4, again, not without any uh, careful scale, what you'll see is the asymptotes do this. So it's not going to surprise you if the actual the game plot goes up slightly before eventually it goes down. Now, what about the phase plot? Well, if I write out the phase explicitly, you get this formula here. Minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega, minus 10 to the minus 1 omega over 2, minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega over 4. So clearly, this is monotonically decreasing. It starts from 0 and finishes at minus 270. So I do the asymptotes. You're going to get something like this. 
So it finishes at minus 270 and starts at 0. And it'll be some form of smooth curve like this. So if I take this information and then construct it into a Bode diagram, uh, sorry, a Nyquist diagram. Now I'm going to have to be a little bit careful here because what we decided was the gain was increasing at first. You'll see that around here. So even though the phase is always reducing, we're always moving clockwise, the gain is increasing at first and doesn't start coming down again till around here. Now by the time we get around here, what's the phase? You can see the phase is already around minus 180. So I'm going to expect a plot that does something a bit like this. Okay? It started from 2, clearly, but what you'll notice is it's quite a big loop. All right? The gain stays up quite a long time while the phase is changing all the time, and the gain only starts reducing at the end. Last example then, so g equals 16 times s plus 3 over s, s, 1 minus s, s plus 4. So if omega is less than 1 in this particular case, then the gain is large, or you could be technical, you could say clearly it's infinite because we have an integrator. The gain is going to reduce monotonically from infinity because of this integrator in essence as frequency increases. So if I do my gain plot, put in my corner frequencies 1, 3 and 4, then what you're going to get is you'll have a slope down, slope down, sl slope down a bit and slope down. So it's not a particularly brilliant plot, but the key thing is the slope is always down. So you've got a monotonic decrease for the whole frequency range. Next, let's look at the phase. Well, if I do the phase argument, here it is, you get 10 to the minus 1 omega over 3, minus 90, plus 10 to the minus 1 omega, minus 10 to the minus 1 omega over 4. So if I put in um, minus 90 here, and then I put in 0. Now, why have I done that? You'll see in a minute. The key thing is I've got a plus here and a plus here. So I've got two plus terms, which are going to ultimately give me 180, and one minus term. So in terms of the asymptotes, though I've uh, not put them on this particular graph, but I'll do it now. If I was to do the phase asymptotes, then I go up there and I go up there and come back. Okay, So I'm looking at a phase diagram that does something like this. Now whether or not the phase actually goes into, I'll put it up here, quadrant 1 or not, is not immediately clear from these graphs because the 3 and 4 are quite close together and I'm not too interested to calculate that at this point. The key thing is you can see the phase all right, it's going to approach zero degrees asymptotically and it's going to begin at minus 90 and move up. So let's have a look and see what sort of diagram we get. So clearly, for most of the time, if not all the time, the phase is in quadrant 4. Okay, we're going to approach the origin in the minus 90 degree direction. So we're going to end up with a plot that looks a little bit like this. Now, whether it actually crosses the positive real axis or not, marginally, I'm not too worried. But that's something you could check if you really wanted to. So what I'll do now is we'll quickly move to MATLAB just to check our working. And just to reiterate, this is something you can always do. So here's some of the code. So let's go up to the top. And you can see this is example 1, which shows 1 over s minus 4. So I'll run that. And there you can see the plot. The arrows aren't particularly clear on this scale, but the arrow is actually going this way. OK, here's example two. And again, you'll see what we mentioned about the gain staying large for quite a long time. You'll see we've got a two here, and you'll see the gain is still bigger than two when it crosses the negative real axis. So the gain stays large for quite a long time before eventually the gain starts coming in and you approach the origin in the minus 270 degree direction. So again, you'll see this is very similar to what we did with our sketch. And here's the last example. 
and again if I just do a zoom so you can see a bit more clearly exactly as we expected started at a phase of minus 90 at infinity and comes in and eventually approaches the origin in the uh, along the positive real axis next then what's the impact of a delay on a Nyquist diagram and we're going to do this relatively quickly so a delay is represented by terms like e to the minus st so if you had an, an undelayed system h of s the delayed system could be g equals e to the minus st times h or you could have something like this so you can see e to the minus st times 4s plus 2 over s s plus 1 and we want to know what impact does this e to the minus st have on a Nyquist diagram and how does this change as the delay changes so t is the length of the delay well the algebra is quite simple what we're going to do is just replace s equal j omega as normal plug it into the e to the minus st and this is what you get you get a modulus of e to the minus j omega t which is 1 and the phase of e to the minus j omega t is minus j omega t so what's the conclusion a delay gives you no change in gain you see here the gain is 1 however it gives you a change in phase and more importantly you can see there's no omega in this so the phase is always getting more negative and goes to minus infinity so the higher the frequency the bigger the phase lag okay so assuming gain is decreasing monotonically with frequency then at high frequency you're going to find a Nyquist diagram that spirals towards the origin and the reason it spirals is because this phase is going to infinity so every time omega t goes through 2 pi you've gone round one full revolution and the rate of rotation clearly increases with t because the actual phase lag is omega t so if t is bigger the phase lag is bigger here's an example then so you'll see I've given a g e to the minus st 1 over s s plus 1 and what I've done is I've said these numbers here are t so I've said we'll try t equals 0 t equals 1 t equals 2 t equals 5 so we start with t equals 0 no delay here's the original Nyquist diagram comes in smoothly to the origin if we make the delay equal to 1 can you see there's a phase lag can you see if I take two corresponding points this one here and then actually I've not plotted this particularly well but the corresponding one has to be the same magnitude so it's about there and can you see there's that phase lag we have rotated it round by omega t I'm going to rub that out so it doesn't destroy uh, get in our way so the the diagram has been rotated round by omega t and you'll see how it now crosses the negative the negative real axis where it didn't before and is going round a bit like this so I'm going to rub that one out as well what happens if we took t up to 2 and you see there's even more phase rotation and now you can see the spiraling is beginning to become obvious okay and finally if we do the last example t equals 5 you'll see the phase rotation and the spiraling becomes very very obvious indeed what I'm going to do on the next plot is blow this up and you'll see okay so what we've done here is we've done a zoom on the origin so you can see a bit better what's going on and if I do this t equals 5 one and you'll see that there's a spiral coming round here and you see what it's doing okay yes it's getting closer to the origin but can you see how it spirals round and round and round and round so that's what a delay is going to do to you and the bigger the delay the more spirals you will see so you noticed when there was a minimal delay which was the green the spiraling wasn't quite so noticeable but with a large delay it's very noticeable or if you put it a different way the phase lag increases with the time delay so some conclusions we've given a few examples of a Nyquist diagram um, sketches for systems with right half plane factors and the key thing is reminding you to be careful 
to construct the phase argument correctly if you've got a right half plane factor. And we've shown MATLAB as ever, just to show this is a good way to check your work. And we've also demonstrated the impact of delays. Now, I'm not going to suggest that you do sketching when you've got delays because that's going to be quite awkward, but it is important that you understand the impact of a delay on a Nyquist diagram and the significance of that will become much more obvious once we start doing feedback loop analysis and design.